Today I'm going to show you how to install the Visual Studio Community Edition. In our web browser, we just went to a search engine such as Google and type in Visual Studio. And you'll notice we get several options. We're going to choose the Visual Studio Community Edition. This is different than your regular Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. When you click on it, you get a couple of options. The one we want to pick is going to be up here. This is Free IDE and Developer Tools Visual Studio Community. Now, you heard that correct. This is Visual Studio Community since approximately about 2013. So for several years now, Microsoft has given away a free copy of Visual Studio. There are several limitations. You will need to read through these. It is free if you're doing uh, a personal project, educational use, uh, and open source projects as of this recording. You can take a look at it because this could change. You want to make sure you're always being completely legal. The Visual Studio Community Edition is basically the Visual Studio Professional Edition. Anything you can do with it, you can do with Community. It does not have some of the enterprise features, uh, but it does have a lot of features. We want to show you uh, just how we get through the install process and how we're going to set up to handle actually multiple languages. So I'm going to choose to download Visual Studio. Notice this is both available for Windows and now even the Mac OS. So I'm going to choose download Visual Studio. I have not used this on a Mac OS, so I'm not going to tell you it's that great or that bad, I just honestly don't know. Uh, if you want, you can download some tips and resources. They'd be happy to give it to you if you fill out their little form. It's not required. I already have that, so I'm gonna kind of skip it at this point, but I'm gonna click on the Visual Studio Community. You may have noticed that it was a very, very fast download. In fact, it actually downloaded while we were talking. I'm going to click on continue. That's because it's just an installer. Uh, the Visual Studio is then going to ask me a series of questions about what types of projects am I going to be developing and is then going to download more files from there. So you'll have a series of answer a couple of questions, download some files, answer a couple of questions, download a lot of files. So we're right now just downloading the installer. The kind of pre-installer was very, very fast to download. This is still pretty fast and it's going to um, give us the options to choose what languages and types of projects we're going to be working on. Things such as, am I going to be doing C Sharp, web development, Node.js, Python, etc. Okay, so here is our actual installation, and they give you a couple of options that you can do. So for example, I can choose under my workloads, I can say, hey, these are the common types of projects that we're working with. Do I want, for example, to just do all the individual components that are necessary for Python? And if you look off the right hand side, you can see that it's going to select them. One of the cool things about Visual Studio is you're not limited to just one type of work environment. So if you are a student, you're doing a lot of different types of languages throughout your coursework, you can also choose others. And notice it just adds to it. Now, every time you add something, this is going to give you a lot more uh, storage space that you have to download and have available on your computer. So just keep that in mind. If I don't want to do, for example, the large workloads where it has a lot of files, I can come down to my individual components and I can choose other elements as well. So for example, under my code tools, I might want to choose the class designer, just as an example. Click once publishing. And some of these I might pick just for example as something to try out and test. This is a great way to do it. And choose both the Git and GitHub extensions. 
under my compilers. Notice I have C sharp by default. Uh, I also am going to want to choose a C++. Now, some things are experimental and they do tell us or they are deprecated. So a couple things just to note about those experimental options are in development. They may not work. Think of these as a potential rough beta. Uh, my experience has been that they're usually OK, but you can't be guaranteed. The deprecated is a tool that is going to be going away. So this is a tool that was created uh, and it's being replaced usually by another tool or it's being phased out. So you probably don't want to choose deprecated unless you're going to be working with an existing project that is specific and needs that. Just something to keep in mind as far as that goes. And go through some other options, see what's available. With our example, we should be fine. I'm going to choose a just-in-time debugger just as an ex um, because that's going to help with some of our projects later on when we're testing. I'm going to choose under development activities C++ core features. Notice that you can also, however, do C++ even for other languages, even though I'm working on Windows. So I can do iOS development, Linux development, etc. So they've really expanded the capabilities of Visual Studio in the last few years. All right, now that I'm done, uh, I can come over to my language packs. By default, it's going to come up with what your computer is already set for, in my case, English. Uh, if you have a different preference, maybe you're on English, but you have a preference for using another native language, notice that it has several different languages that you can pick from. I don't need to make that change, so I'm going to leave that as is. And finally, you can choose a different install location for where you want your files to be downloaded. Now, before I click on the install button, I'm going to look at the little drop down box to my left. I have two options I can install while downloading, or I can download all and then install. Um, if you use the install while downloading, you probably want to have a little bit more stable internet connection because you don't want to be interrupted. I do, so I'm going to leave that as is, and I'm going to click the Install button. So now I've clicked the Install button, I can kind of get an idea and see what's going to take. Looks like I'm going to be downloading about two and a half gigabytes of data, uh, so it's going to take a few minutes. Now is a great time to go get yourself a cup of coffee, uh, maybe watch a small TV show, whatever, because you're going to be here a little while. Once it's finally finished installing, you will be asked to reboot. You can choose not now, especially if you know you're going to be rebooting soon. Now, the other thing you're going to get is an account to log into Visual Studio. You can sign in with this or you can create an account. This is just so you can kind of keep track of things. They'll send you some information about uh, setting up and installing and also getting to start to use uh, some Azure credits and some other things like that. So it's kind of a cool little thing. It's worthwhile setting up and having that account. So you can choose the not now, maybe later if you want. If you already have one, click sign in. Or, of course, you can create one. Once again, on the kind of the default things, the first time you run it, and you can go back and make these changes later, what do you want? Do you want the blue, which is kind of your default, a lighter color, a darker color, one with extra contrast in case you maybe have some uh, visual needs that are going to require that extra contrast? You can also choose your general development settings and have things different depending upon your other ones, so different for JavaScript versus C Sharp or C++, different things like that. I'm going to choose the general and then you can choose to start Visual Studio. The very first time you do it, it is going to take a couple minutes. So I kind of recommend going through that whole process and then going in and doing it. So give it just a minute to do those last couple of steps.
All right, now we're ready. Uh, you can choose to get started by either checking out or cloning some code from like GitHub. Uh, you can open up a brand new project, open up a folder of existing files, or create a new project. You have some whole options, and I'll let you kind of choose from there. Because we are now done with our final install and initial configuration of Visual Studio 2019.